Hey, badass business owners, welcome back to the show. I want to ask you a question. When was the last time that you took your profit and loss statement and you compared this year to last year? I don't care what time of the year you look at this, but you're really taking a moment to say, all right, this is what my next three months look like based off of last year's history. That's one way to do it. The second way to do it is to say, how did I perform the last three months compared to the same three months the year prior? You see, our numbers tell us a story. And when we start stacking our numbers on top of each other, we can look for trends. We can look for opportunities, both bad opportunities, things that are going really bad, or opportunities to grow and develop even more sales. Let me explain. Let's say that you look at your numbers over the last three months and you're barely squeaking by on making some money and you get like really depressed and think, oh man, this just isn't working. I'm just not making that much money. But if you were to take last year's numbers for the same three months, you find out that, oh my gosh, I was losing a thousand to two thousand dollars every single month. Put it in perspective, if last year for the same three months you were losing two to $3,000, but this year you're breaking even, you need to understand you made a huge improvement in your business because you made up that $2,000. So technically you're making $2,000 more than you did the year prior. It all comes down to perspective because yes, if we look at zero, It doesn't look good. If we say, okay, I'm breaking even, that's not where I want to be. But when we look at the trend from the years prior, and now all of a sudden we're making more money than we did last year, we're going in the right direction. Is it where you want to be? No. A lot of times that isn't. And that's what's going to keep you going and trying to get that to be a more positive number. But you need to stop and celebrate the win to say, wow, I made up a $2,000 deficit that I was having in my business from the year prior. But the reverse can also be true. I have seen where people are all excited because they put an extra $5,000 to their bottom line. And when we look at the year prior's numbers for the same month or the, the trend months, it was actually seven to $8,000. The reality is that's not great. If you're only putting $5,000 to your bottom line, well, that number is a good number. When you compare it to the year prior, unless there was some very good reasons as to why that happened, you need to have an alarm bell going off going, why am I making less money this year than I was last year. See, that's the problem. That's why we fail to react the way that we should, is we don't always look at the trend and we go, oh, okay, I can live with that number. That's a good number. However, I don't want you thinking about that. I want you to be looking at your trends and where you're going. And I want you to celebrate the wins. I absolutely do. I don't want you to be settling for, hey, I broke even and last year I was losing money. Oh, okay, well, that's a good thing. No, I want you to celebrate that win. I absolutely do. But I want you to still be hungry to say, now, how do I get it up another $2,000 next year? And how do I use this information to help me continue down the path that I'm on? And not just look at your profit, look at your sales, look at your expenditures. I, I was looking at a PL yesterday, for example, and their sales went up $300,000. That's awesome. That's amazing. But then I looked at their profit and their profit more than doubled, which was even more amazing. And when we looked at their expenses, part of the reason they were able to put more to the bottom line was because they controlled the majority of their expenses. There may have only been four or five categories that went up due to having more sales. And they made sense to go up because they were going to spend more money on those items doing more sales. But the ones that didn't need to change, those stayed really low and very consistent from a dollar standpoint. And the percentage of the PL went down because they didn't need as much of those sales to be able to pay them. Even though the costs remained the same, the percentage went down. And that's what we want to do because this profitability went from 19% to 31%. And that's amazing. And a lot of that had to do with shifting that money straight to profit because it didn't need to be spent on other things. And then meanwhile, I'm looking at another PL and the opposite is happening where their sales are staying flat, but all their expenses and costs are going up. Therefore, their profitability is going down. In their mind, they're doing the same amount of sales and they feel good about that, but they're not realizing that they're not controlling everything and which is why they're making less money. Now, could some of this be due to rising costs in some areas? Yes, absolutely. That's going to happen. I've seen that a lot on gas and mileage, for example. However, things that aren't tied to sales, when those start going up, you need to step back and ask yourself why. You always need to be looking for those opportunities because remember, profit comes from sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profit. So part of that is the sales that you do. Yes, the pricing that you have, the amount you sell, how much you sell, all that good stuff. 
but you also need to be watching your costs and you need to be watching every single one of those expenses because there's always opportunity. I've had people go and claim back a couple hundred bucks every single month just by renegotiating some of their other bills that they have. They might have lowered their phone bill, for example, or re found a different place for their insurance. Keep in mind that $200 a month is going to end up being $1,200 for $2,400 by the end of the year, depending upon what it is that you negotiate. So you want to make sure you're looking at all that. The other great thing that trends and stacking and looking does is sometimes our sales shift. For a lot of you, you have COVID sales, pre-COVID sales, and now post-COVID sales. And your sales have completely changed and it's really thrown some of you off with what it is that you're selling. A lot of times what's happening is you're looking at last year or two years ago's numbers to be able to drive what it is that you do today. But you have to ask yourself, were those items, were those products, were those services impacted by COVID? And if they were, they may not be the best numbers for you to be able to set your goals against. It might be that you have to go back to pre-COVID and say, okay, what was doing really well then? And should I go back and look at those items and see if they'll do much better now post-COVID? Because we're getting back to a more normal, if you will, type of doing things. But here's the catch. There's a lot of things that are never going to go back. There's a lot of things that came out of COVID and working from home and doing things that move technology along, that move certain buying patterns along. People ordering, for example, and having it delivered to them. A lot of that didn't go away. A lot of people like that convenience and they've continued to do that. So if there's something in your business, for example, that was a good thing, you need to continue doing that. And how can you maximize that and make it better? A great example of that is restaurants. A lot of restaurants had to pivot and they went to delivery service or curbside delivery. And you'll notice a lot of them are continuing to do it now, even though people can come inside and sit and have a meal. But they found that that was very profitable for them. They just had to make some tweaks. And now that they figured out how to do it and make some money at it, they've continued to do it. I personally love the monthly trends and I love stacking them on top of each other because I think that that really gives us an idea of where we make our money. A lot of times business owners, when they're doing it from their gut, they're off about three to four weeks before a season and after a season. Memory kind of remembers what it wants to remember and not exactly what happens. Your best bet is to stack those months on top of each other and say, oh, I need to ramp up here and I need to ramp down here. For example, at the time of this recording, we are at the very beginning stages of spring. And a lot of people are just now reacting to spring. Now, some of you, spring hasn't really felt it outside because it's still rainy, cold, and we've got all these weird weather things going on. But you should have been thinking about spring back in the winter months. Right now, for example, sometime in the next 30 days, you need to sit down, stack those months on top of each other for summer and start saying, what do I need to do now to be prepared for summer? So for example, if your best season is in summer, now is the time that you need to be thinking about things you need to pre-order, get going, or hire people. If you need to hire more people to be on your team to help get this business done, this is the time you need to start thinking about that. The worst time to start thinking about seasonality is the moment it starts. That kills so many small business owners because they're always behind the eight ball. And then when they think back to the year prior, they go, oh yeah, that's right. It went crazy in April and I took off. So I need to get ready. But they think about that on April 1st because the trigger date says, oh, it's April. I need to start getting ready. When the reality is they probably should have started getting ready in March, whatever the case may be. Information is your friend. Stop looking at your business numbers as if it's math and it's the worst enemy and you hate numbers and this and that. No, it's telling you a story. It's telling you the story of your business. It's giving you the information you need to be able to be prepared to make the next two to three months even more successful. There's some of you that have to order so far in advance that come June 1st or July 1st, you have to start ordering stuff for the holiday season, for Christmas and whatnot, because it's going to take you that long to get the products or ingredients that you need, or to set your marketing campaigns up early enough to be able to do it. All of this good information can be found in your business numbers. Like I said, just grab those P&Ls, look at year over year, look at month over month, stack those suckers. If you happen to have three years or even four years, even better exercise is put those months all on top of each other and look for the curves of the business because you're going to find they're going to be pretty consistent with each other. Or if you have a high spike, ask yourself, did you write that down somewhere? What exactly happened? Which is why I always talk about having a sales journal of some kind to be able to jot those notes down. Because like I said, our memory remembers some key things, but it usually gets it wrong. 
which is exactly why when the police interview three people who saw the same crime, they all three have different stories because they're all remembering things a little bit differently and from a different perspective. So more than likely, your memory is being clouded by what it is that you remember at that time based off of what was going on in the moment. So today's mission is get out there, go grab your PLs, go look at your month over month, go look at year over year, and look at how the trends are going. Look at this year versus last year. Celebrate the wins. Just because you broke even, but last year you lost money, that's a win. That's not something to be sad about. Now, it doesn't mean, like I said earlier, you don't strive to get it up to another $2,000, but what it means is look at what you did differently this year versus last year. And set the expectation that if in your next few months you're making a $2,000 profit, well, if you were making a $2,000 profit before over the year prior, then you need to start counting on the fact that that's going to be four dollars or $5,000. The numbers will give you your trends and let you know what you should expect. So just because you're breaking even, if you're beating last year, that means you should continue that trend over the coming months as well. Lots of good information. I know it gets confusing on a podcast, but I promise you, once you start diving into those puppies, there's so much good information in there as long as you're looking for it and having an open mind as to what's it telling you. So just start reading it and start looking at it and saying, what are you trying to tell me? And I promise you, you're going to start finding little nuggets here and there. And as you do this more and more, you're going to find even more great stuff in there. Now get out there, go look at your numbers, be the badass that I know you are, and I'll talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now.